Hello and welcome back to our Advent Devo series. We are really excited to continue to dive into the story of Jesus. And today what we're going to be looking at is uh, we're going to be looking at a, a famous prophecy regarding the birth of Jesus and who Jesus is when he came and still is today. But first, uh, when we come to Christmas, it can be really easy to hear the same stories, look at the same narratives, hear these same verses, and it just becomes white noise. The old adage is true. Familiarity breeds contempt. Quick story about this. Our son Wesley, he has it hard when it comes to Christmas. His birthday is right in the middle of December, December 14th. And so he inevitably will always get that relative or that friend who will give him a gift and go, oh yeah, it's for both. It's your birthday and Christmas. And so he gets a little bit shortchanged. My birthday's in July. And so I always had the perfect split of presents, presents in the middle of summer and then presents at Christmas in winter. But Wesley, he gets a little bit shortchanged. But nonetheless, he loves Christmas more than more than any of our other kids. He loves Christmas. A few years back, he was about three, and as we were putting him to bed, we always uh, sing with our kids and pray with them when we're putting them to bed, and Wesley, he wanted me to sing to him the song Silent Night when I was putting him to bed, and so I said, okay, great, so sang Silent Night. Next day, he wanted me to sing it again, and through the Christmas season, he wanted me to sing Silent Night, which is great. It's a great song. Anyways, January rolls around, and he still wants me to sing Silent Night. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, the lights are still up on the house, haven't taken it down yet, still a little bit of the Christmas spirit. And so we sang Silent Night, and I kid you not, I sang Silent Night every night to Wesley for him to go to bed for two years. For two years we sang Silent Night every single time. And so it became so familiar. It became the song over and over and over again to where, number one, I hated the song, and number two, it was so familiar to me that it was contemptible. I I couldn't stand it anymore. And when we approach Christmas, that is something that we want to guard against. As we are reading these passages that we've heard a million times, as we're hearing stories of shepherds, as we're hearing stories of wise men, of baby Jesus being born in the manger, we don't want our familiarity with those stories to breed that contempt. We don't want it to, to lose the, uh, the joy that God would have for us during this Christmas season just because it's something that we've heard a million times. And so let's guard our hearts against that as we come to this famous prophecy in Isaiah. Here's what Isaiah chapter 9 says, starting in verses 1 and 2. It says, "...the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light." Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is a beautiful description of what Jesus came to do. And I love that first section there. It says that it says that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Have you ever been in darkness? I'm not talking about when you're in your house and you shut the lights off, but have you ever been in a cave and turned off your flashlight? Something that is so dark that your eyes are unable to adjust to it because there is zero light coming in. When you're in that type of darkness, it is disorienting. It is discombobulating. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what to look for. There is nothing until the light shines. So often when we are looking around at our culture, it can be so easy to focus on the darkness. It can be so easy to get angry at the darkness because it is darkness. Uh, In the book of John chapter 3, this is what Jesus says. This is right after the famous verse, John 3.16. He says this in 3.19. It says, people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. 
If you've ever been in a deep sleep and somebody comes into the room and flips on the light all of a sudden, it's not pleasant. It's not fun. Usually you lash out at whoever is turning on that light. And that's what it says. It says that for those who are walking in darkness, when the light shines on them, it says they hate it. They hate the darkness because their works are evil. And so it can be easy to just get angry at the darkness, to post about the darkness on social media, instead of letting the light of the gospel, number one, shine on the darkness inside of our hearts, and then through us, once we've taken that log out of our eye, then we can see clearly to take the speck out of our brother's eye. And so we want the light of the gospel to shine on us, because light brings life. Life cannot be sustained in darkness. Light brings life. Number two, light also brings truth. It says that that, that analogy is used all throughout Scripture. When light shines on something, it reveals what it really is, and that's why often God's Word is referred to as light. Your Word will be a light to my feet and a lamp to my path because light reveals truth. And then finally, light reveals hope. Light is the light at the end of a tunnel. And so I don't know where you're at during this Christmas season. Maybe you feel like you're in that cave. Maybe you feel like there's no light around you or the light is so dim you can barely see it. But for the Christian, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. No matter what, God will shine his light on all things and he will make all things new. And so we get to look forward to that day. Next in this passage it tells us about who Jesus is. Not only is Jesus the light of the world who shines in the darkness, but it has these beautiful descriptions of who he is. It tells us uh, that a child is born, a son is given, the government shall be on his shoulders, and then it lists these different names of who he is. And so four things that we can see about who Jesus is in these descriptions in Isaiah chapter 9. Number one, this tells us that Jesus is here. It says, to us, a child is born. And that's one of those verses that is so familiar to us, we just skip over it. But it is amazing. God did not just see our darkness from afar and go, oh, man, somebody should really do something about that. He didn't just send us warm thoughts. He didn't just send us a Christmas card. No, no, he sent his son into the world to be the light. C.S. Lewis once he said that we cannot find God just by going up to space. We can't find God the way that you find someone by going up to the second floor of your house. The only way that we are able to find God, the only way that God is able to meet us, is if he writes himself into our story. And that is what that phrase means. To us, a child is born. That is God, the author, the ultimate author, writing himself into our story. Number two, it tells us that Jesus is a gift. It says, to us, a son is given. And John 3.16, which we just talked about a little bit earlier, that expresses that. It's the most famous verse, arguably, in the whole Bible. It says, God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And so number two, Jesus is a gift. Number three, Jesus is the king. The next section says the government shall be upon his shoulder. And then later of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness, both from this time and forevermore. What is the kingdom of God? In its simplest form, the kingdom of God is anywhere where Jesus is the king. And so right now, Jesus has started his reign by being the king of our hearts. But there is also the forevermore that is coming, where Jesus will return, where Jesus' righteous rule will set all things right, and everything will be made new, because Jesus is a good king that rules right now and will rule fully in the future. And then lastly, Jesus is a friend. Not only is he a king, but he is our friend. It describes him as the wonderful counselor and the everlasting father. Now, a good counselor is someone who listens, someone who gives good advice, but Jesus is so much more than that. Jesus is not just a counselor who you sit down with for an hour and then he goes, oh, 
time's up. We'll see you next week. No, because he's also an everlasting father. And so he doesn't just listen to us. He knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And so there is nobody who is able to counsel us better than Jesus through his word as he shines the light of his word on our lives to reveal our darkness and draw us into the warmth of his light. That is the gift that God gives us during this Christmas season. We'll see you next time.